Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Episode number 61 today for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix in Season 4. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Monaco Grand Prix, then be sure to go check the one before you see this one. That was a very hectic one around the Principality. Tire wear coming in as a major factor. Two stops, the the one. And in the end, we came out with a very solid result, I would say. You know, it was a tough afternoon. A lot of, uh, you know, big names got caught out in that Grand Prix. Pre, one of them being Sergio Perez, even our teammate Jensen Button, you know, even though he did score some consistent points, he was at one point down in P20 and had to actually recover quite well late on into the race. So I think we did very well uh, in the end, spoiler alert, to come away for uh, a podium, a good second place to jump Daniel Ricciardo on that two stop. You know, we went aggressive and early with that and it worked out for us. And it may be the same again around Azbajan. Azbajan, I think, will be looking to be a two stop as well. Last season, we had one of the most hectic Azerbaijan Grand Prix, let alone just a Grand Prix in general with so many DNFs. I think in the end, what was it? Uh, three safety cars and I think 12 DNFs, I think it was, or 11 and one disqualification. It was, uh, yeah, it was a bit mental. I don't know if we'll get the exact same sort of thing this time round. I guess for the sake of just having some racing on a Baku, hopefully not. We actually get to see, you know, everyone or most people get to the end of the race and see how it all pans out, but it's going to be another really interesting one. It's another very different circuit to Monaco, even to the ones we've already had at Bahrain, Imola, Portimao. So, you know, this first part of the season, it's very much kind of up in the air. You don't really know who the best teams are exactly, because there's no pattern. You know, there's no similar circuits. We're not really seeing much of a pattern as we've had different winners in every single Grand Prix so far, which is fantastic. But one thing that has been constant is this man on the right-hand side the man who leads the World Championship right now, Jensen Button, on his return to Formula 1 this season, has been looking mighty fine. 85 focus. That is so high for a 100-rated driver. So that, you know, it's no surprise why he's doing so well at the moment in the season. And we really need to pull up our socks. I think we did that little bit last episode by getting a podium, whilst Jensen, for the first time ever, was not on the podium uh, in Season 4. But let's try and continue that, hopefully, and look to try and beat him once again and you know generally speaking I do actually really like Baku as of late last especially last two F1 games I've really enjoyed my time around this circuit kind of get into a flow in qualifying and then also in the race well I mean the race is always just usually quite fun and hectic so it's always uh, you know fun to be part of you just need to try and survive the race basically and get through to the end in one piece but anyway we go through into Saturday qualifying day things are dry right now but there is a forecast for some rain potentially later on so we'll see about that but right now in Q1 all about just trying to get through into the second part of qualifying the car feeling pretty stable and pretty okay so let's see what sort of lap time we can get generally speaking though Q1 always a little bit slow just trying to get up to speed with the car around each circuit we come to and as I said just about getting through into the next part but Valtteri Bottas really flexing the muscles of his Williams that is amazing to see a Williams at the top of the timesheet it's been a long long time since we saw a Williams right at the sharp end on any kind of timesheet in Formula 1 great to see Bottas right up there but Guan Yu Zhou 1.4 seconds off him so very very odd there massive disparity so I don't know what to believe I don't know if Bottas has just pulled out a worldly sort of glitch lap time or Guan Yu Zhou just uh, had a howler I mean the Williams car we've seen so far has been mighty good in a straight line so I'd like to think they would actually genuinely have some pace around here so going to be interesting going into uh, you know the, the rest of the weekend not just qualifying but the race pace as well because remember Bottas himself has just been so unlucky this season so far but he's right up there and it looks like Ferrari continue to struggle a little bit despite you know going into the season thinking they'll be quick McLaren Red Bull Mercedes all quite equally matched George Russell dragging his Alpine up there as well so we might have a bit of a mixed up order at the top end there but one man who's still there of course is Jensen Button in P2 let's go into Q2 then and we immediately go out for our flying lap because I saw the indication for some rain thought we'd go straight 
straight out of there in case the rain starts to fall, and it does. We are here met with a soaking circuit, but of course, so many times before, the tracks look like this. Remember Suzuka so many times uh, in this career mode series so far, and the grip's been there. But immediately off the auto drive, the wheel spin kicks in. A little bit iffy on the front end as well, and then we're too committed into the left-hander. The back end goes round, the front end wouldn't comply, and we've broken our rear wing as we clouted the wall, and the front right tyre is off. We were just way too confident into the left hand are. You know, I didn't know what the grip levels were like and you can see the back end goes in first and we actually break a bit of our rear wing I saw on the end. Thankfully, obviously, that will be able to be fixed into the race tomorrow, but that is our qualifying done and over. We are out of Q2 and we're in 16th place and Jensen Button was also knocked out. We didn't know. I didn't get to see what happened with the rest of the qualifying, of course, because I had to retire and you don't get to watch the rest of it, unfortunately. But somehow, Jensen's had a howler as well. Maybe our car's just not going very well around this circuit, especially in the rain, it would seem, because Jensen Button is out as well. P11 there, so um, I don't know what's gone on. So, you know, it's been a great season so far for our team as a whole. Top of the championship consistency from Jensen, myself. We've had some good races here and there off the back of Monaco. And we come here today, Saturday, one to forget for our whole team. Jensen out in P11, not out on the intermediates and then I try to go out on the dry tyres. You know, my team allowed me to go out on the dry tyres. You know, they didn't say it was too wet for the dries. When I looked at the circuit, it looked no different to Suzuka last season or the season before, for example, where it's looked so wet and yet it's so dry on the slick tyres. So can you blame me for thinking that we'll be fine? And so I just went into that, into that left-hander confident as ever and then there was just simply no response on the rear end and we smashed the rear and then smash the front as well as we span across the circuit the very tight wall so it's a Saturday to forget for our team and both myself and Jensen Button need to be bouncing back on Sunday let's go to the grid then and see how things shaped up in Q3 and who is starting where and a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square heart of Baku and home of course to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix with high speeds, tight corners and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today, so our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully away from the barriers. The Baku City Circuit measures roughly six kilometers and is made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge where the smallest of mistakes could lead to catastrophic consequences for all of our drivers. It's race day yet again and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start. And this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Mick Schumacher lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Gasly, Sonoda, Lando Norris and Sainz, Ricardo, Verstappen, Russell and Jensen Button, Bottas, Leclerc. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Lewis Hamilton and Giovinazzi, Eilert, the owner driver, and Guan Yu Zhou and Esteban Ocon, Stroll, Latifi, Lundgaard, and Nobuharu Matsushita. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. So it looks like Red Bull have found their feet then in the season. Maybe a 1-2 for Red Bull. Schumacher on pole alongside Perez, although Leclerc technically did qualify in P2 in that wet Q3 session. He's got a 10-place grid penalty. So the Ferrari in the hands of Leclerc today did have some genuine pace. So a bit of a shame for Ferrari again to be kind of knocked out of contention a little bit with Sainz down in P6, Leclerc P12. Going to be difficult for him to make his way up the order because we've got a lot of quick cars in between. But it's then uh, kind of Noah's Ark then for the Red Bull guys. A very good day 
for Honda with the two Red Bulls up there now for Tauris. We've got a few people on the medium compound, of course, because it was a free choice of tyre due to it being wet in Q2 and I assume in Q3 as well. Um, so, you know, two Red Bulls picking the medium. That was a strong strategy at Monaco. Gasly's picked it for the Alpha Tauri, not Sonoda. And then you've got a bit of a mix up as well with Sainz, Ricardo, and Button and Russell also choosing the mediums. We will also go for that strategy. It is going to be a stapled on two stop for everyone. So, unlike Monaco, won't give us a massive strategic advantage, but it will still be advantageous to maybe on the medium. If, if we can be quick enough on the medium at the start of the race and not fall too far back compared to the soft runners, eventually lap six, seven, when the soft tyres start to wear out quite a fair bit, our tyre will be the better race tyre. And then the end of the race on lower fuel, if we put on the red wall, will be nice and quick. But the thing is, a lot of people are also going to do that, including our teammate, including the two Red Bulls who are one too. So it's going to be, I think, really hard today. You know, without the club not being there on the set on the front row alongside Schumacher, now you've got Perez elevated to P2. It actually might be quite hard for, for anyone to break Red Bull stronghold on this Grand Prix. Let's find out. Maybe their sister team, Alpha Tauri, being the kind of, you know, spanner in the works for the, uh, you know, more senior Red Bull team. For us and for Jensen, though, the task is simple. Try and recover, especially for us. We're even further back than Jensen is. So, got to try and make the most of it on these mediums and hopefully not lose too much time on the medium tyre compared to the other soft runners around us. Whatever the case is, I reckon it's going to be another hectic race here in Baku for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. We go to five red lights and we're on the way from P16 on the grid. So far back from the top spots and it's a flurry of cars up the road. We nearly made contact with Giovinazzi just trying to get through into turn one unscathed there side by side with our fellow Brit Callum Eilot in the Aston Martin. Giovinazzi and Hamilton side by side. The Mercedes having to really fight the Alfa Romeo as we squeeze out the Aston. Guan Yu Joe behind me. P17 disappointing for him as well. His teammate up at the sharp end there doing Williams proud at the moment as we make a diving effort on the outside to get not one but maybe two positions. Bit of snap of oversteer. Hamilton now fighters. He's on the soft compound there so that Mercedes will be quick on the soft so crucial to get ahead of him and we've got some really quick cars ahead of us now immediately as well on the softs. Bottas, Leclerc they're going to be quite hard to pass maybe hopefully our car's got some decent speed in a straight line to try and get that uh, Ferrari. The Williams though that might be harder and that might have to be done in a break zone or in the corners where the Williams does lose a bit of time. You've got Russell P9, Sainz P8, then Verstappen, Ricardo, Norris up to P5 there two McLarens, Lyre Stern as they both got ahead of the Mercedes and it's still two by two with the two Alpha Tauris in three fours. The rear gunners effectively for the Red Bulls. Mick Schumacher from pole leads this race still. Perez second place there. Uh, so, you know, the last race is race winner. Looking confident, looking good at the moment, controlling the race early doors on lap one and it's a, it's a one, two, three, four for the Honda powered team. So very good stuff for them. For us then, back to our POV, looking to chase after Leclerc. Like I said, could we get it done in a straight line? No DRS, but look at the straight line speed difference there for us versus the Ferrari. Meanwhile, you've got Valtteri Bottas making a move on Jensen Button as we defend Leclerc. Bottas in the Williams, he's only gone and gone for an overtake on Jensen Button. Button on the outside, the two nearly make some contact there. Button, a bit of a sitting duck, it seemed. The Williams so good in a straight line that in race conditions on that straight, the Williams can be very deadly indeed. And he's actually not too bad in the corners. He's holding up Button so much so that now we're here. We've arrived. But these two, two mobile chicanes, where do we go? Button's been squeezed out. He's a bit slow. Can we nip down the inside? This is going to be oh so close on our teammate. He's going to squeeze us into the left-hand side. We'll do the same on the right. He's over the curb. And we just narrowly avoid contact and keep that as clean as we can with our teammates as we get up into P11. But Bottas into the point. And he's going to be the next man we're chasing after as he actually closes up on this train of Russell, Sainz and Sonoda. Sonoda's struggling on the soft compound there, but Bottas defending us on the inside there. He's over the curb. He's slow. We narrowly miss making contact with him on the right-hand side and we get a beautiful launch and we go right around the outside of him into that left and then right. That is a lovely little neat move, I must say, 
on Valtteri there, up into P10 now, and on the back of that uh, train, as I said, Sonoda, he's dropped off, he's no longer P4, he's down to P, well, he's now pit on lap 6 now, this is the next lap, he's pit now, so the Sonoda was struggling on those softs so much, he's down to P19 now, having made a pit stop there, so interesting, the soft tyres, for some drivers, really a difficulty right now, as they wear out, so let's see how it goes for one of those McLarens, I think Norris also on the softs, he's struggling, and the same can be said for Max Verstappen and Schumacher, the race leader clouts the barrier, Schumacher a bit deep into the Baku Crazy. Castle section, and it's all gone so wrong for the Monaco race winner, it's a DNF a win, DNF for the last three races for the German, Mick Schumacher, he's out, that was so unfortunate, just went a little bit deep into that corner, little AI mistake, and then he, I think he clouted the rear, and that rotated his car enough to smash the front right tyre into the wall, and so his teammate picks up the pieces, and is in first place now, Gasly up to second, and the full core safety car is out, so Sonoda, oh that's such a shame for Yuki, he's pit at the worst time, because now all of us are going to get a free pit stop here, whilst he has already made his pit stop under normal racing down, conditions, so you know, good stuff for the likes of, you know, Verstappen, I think Norris there, who uh, stayed out on the softs, although to say that, the McLarens actually got completely screwed over, you can see they're behind us, we've gained two more free positions, we've gained three positions to P6, because the McLarens, they both parked up for some, well, I think they're just avoiding Schumacher, but they ghosted, and everyone, including me, but all the others around me, we all drove through the two McLarens, so even Button is ahead of the McLarens right now, so they got royally screwed over. So Baku season four, hectic as ever, and maybe not as hectic as last season, but definitely changed up the order, it's a great pit stop from us, and we actually almost jumped the staff in there as we ghost through him, that's unfortunate, we almost gained one more position in the pit stop, I mean, we did gain one position on Ferrari, Ferrari's so slow with the pit stop we've jumped then so great work by the pit crew and we're up into p5 is it so we've gained four positions in this entire safety car period so schumacher uh, out of the grand prix perez leads the way then in the only remaining red bull gasly second russell verstappen ourselves and now we go on the restart there the brakes a little bit cold and into turn one just trying to avoid verstappen's rear end there massive lock up on the left hand side there and signs on the soft compound behind us. He could be a threat as he's already all over the back of us. Meanwhile we've got Button defending from Guan Yu Zhou. Button not looking like his quick self today. Struggling with the balance of the car. Just a general, you know, the, the, the race pace isn't there for him. He got knocked out. Maybe this is why he got knocked out. He didn't have much pace even over one lap maybe because Guan Yu Zhou in the Williams is trying to overtake him. It's another battle for Button with his former team that he was at and Guan Yu Zhou on the inside side surely has the better racing line to squeeze Button out no Jensen gets a really good exit though and remains ahead as we are looking in our rear view mirror Sainz is on a mad one he's looking quick he dives down the inside the, the Spaniard with a big dive we just about saw that I had to take avoiding action because if I committed to that corner that would have been a crash the Ferrari would have been in my side pod we may have got damage so having to take avoiding action there to Sainz is very aggressive driving style but uh, in the end we'll re-overtake him then and remember he's on the soft so eventually those tyres, six laps later, they'll start wearing out. So we just need to try and remain calm and get back ahead of him, which we have done in P5, and then try and press on because immediately, yeah, on lap 11 then, Bottas closing up to him. The Williams, both of them looking good. You know, uh, Guan Yu Zhou fighting Button. He's got a head of Button now. Look at the, uh, on the on the ladder. Uh, Guan Yu Zhou is up into P10. And then Valtteri Bottas has just got up to P6. The Williams guys, they're actually looking very handy. Maybe not, you know, right at the sharp end. But they're actually really annoying some of these guys. Some big names in Formula 1. Sainz, Button, you're being overtaken. You know, right now, uh, Bottas ahead of Sainz, Sonoda and Ricardo. Sonoda, obviously, you remember, struggling on those softs at the beginning of the race, down in P8, whereas his teammate on mediums up into P2. So Yuki probably regretting not starting on mediums right now. And speaking of uh, Bottas annoying the big names, well, Bottas is annoying us because he goes sailing around the outside of us. He locks up on the front left, but this is Bottas trying to overtake us. He's on the same compound, so this is a fair fight. And uh, this is for, you know, position. We will be racing Bottas, you know, for the rest of the race, potentially, if nothing goes wrong for either me or him. So good to keep the position because up the road, you know, 
Russell and Verstappen, they've got away from us. You know, they're four seconds up the road, Russell is. He's been overtaken now by, uh, by Verstappen. Meanwhile, we've got a battle brewing between Norris and Ocon. Norris on the outside and the Alpine is squeezed out and Norris using, I think the, no, no, he's on the mediums. I was going to say the soft compound there, but no, Norris using the mediums to good effect. His teammate Ricardo, meanwhile, all the way down in P20, but I believe he has maybe made already another pit stop. So interesting times for McLaren. They were sitting pretty in what was what? P5 and 6, and now they're P11 and 20. So let's see how this goes. Obviously, Ricardo's already pit, so he may come back into this, but I think Norris may find it harder. They really got, you know, duped out by that ghosting under the safety car. Nothing they can do, of course. Nothing I can do to, to help that in terms of just unlucky with the way the game mechanics work with the ghosting. But uh, all the while, away from that, always calm in Sergio Perez as well in the lead ahead of Gasly. Uh, one second, though. So Gasly is keeping Perez honest for the race lead. That Alpha Tauri could still try and fight for the race lead maybe later on. But right now, the man fighting us is Bottas once again in that rapid Williams. He's got DRS though, so that's the big difference here to be honest as we deploy ERS, but the DRS is so powerful around Azerbaijan. We go diving around the outside. This time, Bottas chooses the inside line, but we're going to hold this position. We get back to the racing line and cut across to live for another day, but for how long? Bottas this time is so much closer. He's hustling and harrying us as we go through the subtle left and right, the place where we crashed in qualifying in Q2 and the rain was falling and the rain may be falling metaphorically for us right now as Bottas and Sonoda are closing up. Are we going to feel some pain here as the fin is through on the right? Sonoda, he pits. Sonoda pits early for his last pit stop there so we don't have to fight him but we're fighting Bottas. We switch back from right to left trying to get back down the inside of the fin but we just don't have the confidence and uh, the measure to go down the inside there. I thought that was a bit too too much of a risk because Bottas was already turning in a little bit to the apex and I thought maybe I could get the DRS and try and move here but we're too far back we have a little lunge and a look but Bottas is far too quick on that straight so I missed my opportunity there I thought I could kind of get Bottas back straight away with that DRS that second DRS zone in sector one but he was too quick and uh, meanwhile Norris overtakes Hamilton there the two Brits fighting and it's actually a, a little gaggle of Brits because Button's up the road as well fighting Guan Yu Zhou so We've got Button P8, Lando Norris, the reigning world champion in P9, and then Hamilton P10. Now, speaking of Guan Yu Zhou, he has actually gotten away from Button, and he's now annoying me. Bottas has now pit lap 17. He just pit the previous lap for his last pit stop, so he's not there anymore. But his other, the other, t the other Williams guy, his teammate now, is annoying the heck out of me. Uh, Guan Yu Zhou nearly going for a move, but he's pulling out on the left because he comes in for his pit stop. We continue on. We overtake Verstappen, so we're going a little bit longer than everyone else. I wonder what tyre everyone's going on. I'm going to go on the soft compound tyre. That's why I'm going a little bit longer. But lap 19, I'm losing a lot of pace now on these mediums. Button's caught me up, so we're going to come in. Button continues on for one more lap there. So at this point, I was very much questioning my pace because I my pace dropped off massively on these mediums. You know, Joe caught me up. Button caught me up. Button was a couple of seconds behind me. I was very, very sus of what, what, where my pace went because I didn't feel like the tire wear was that high. And as we come into our pit stop, well, I mean, it says it all. Front wing change. So we, we must have knocked our front wing somewhere. I didn't have any indication of damage, by the way, on my heads up display. So that classic thing, that annoying thing on F1 2021 where you can have damage, you know, without having it visually and actually showing up on your heads up display. So that has really put a damper on our race. It was a tough time on Saturday in qualifying and it's been a tough old time in the race here because we were basically fighting with one hand behind our back with that damage for God knows how many laps it was. I don't even know when the problem started basically so more problems in this race to come back from but we continue to get our head down because there's still some good points and positions to get today as we go across the line to overtake Giovinazzi on the inside with a lot of aggression into turn one purple second and third sector button comes out ahead of us of course remember he did not change his front wing so that's why he's ahead of us purely for the time we lost with the front wing not any, not anything to do with the tire wear or anything like that but we're closing up to our teammate and our other fellow Brit Hamilton here so 
of the two former McLaren teammates together here. This is going to be quite spicy. Will Button go for a move on Hamilton, I wonder? This could get quite tasty indeed, but we're going to just sit here and try and time the ERS right. Beautiful to right-hander there. We turned off ERS, got the nose turned in, turned it back on. Brilliant timing and strategy with the ERS usage, and then DRS open for a double overtake. Up it to P12. Norris now comes in for his pit stop. Sonoda as well, and so we're up into P10, into the points, grazing the wall there. Hopefully not damaging the wing anymore again. And now we have to go on and go forth and try and overtake Leclerc and Granu Joe. So that's how much time we lost to all of them. You know, we were racing Bottas. He's even further up the road than Granu Joe. But that's where we were before the pit stops. You know, five seconds we lost, basically. Uh, and a little bit more, of course, because we caught up to Jensen and Hamilton. And we're catching up to Leclerc, who we haven't seen too much of in this race since the beginning of the Grand Prix, where he pit a little bit early and got out of things. I think that Ferrari's had some pretty poor tyre wear, and he's on the medium. So we've got the much better pace. Purple first sector, green the second. So this may be a pretty tasty lap with the DRS also wide open. And it's going to be the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So we're flying right now on on these tyres. We're only, you know, one of two people right now that I can see that's on the softs, myself and Jensen. So everyone else elected for the medium compound. Interesting. So that's why our car is looking so quick. But here we are then on the last lap of the Grand Prix to try and get P8 from a Williams car on the outside. The Chinese driver defends on the left-hand side, but we swoop through on the right, get it pin perfect on the outside with the wall and we're into P8. But ahead of us, Sainz, Russell, they've jumped as Bottas has jumped all the way to P5. He's had a brilliant race. And you know what? He deserves it. Bottas has had so much bad luck this season and in real life. But just like in real life, this in, in the game here, you know, how many, you know, he's lost out on three big points positions this season in that Williams. You know, so far, Granny Joe's scored Williams, uh, uh, all of Williams' points. So Bottas really deserves this P5, I feel. Even though it's annoying, we were fighting him. Uh, and then uh, at some point our wing broke. But this is the man of the moment. It's going to be a back-to-back -back win for Red Bull. It looks like they've finally arrived in this season. And they're actually going to be consistent this time around in Season 4. And might be title contenders if they're lucky. Because Perez wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's going to be Gasly in second place in the Alpha Tauri. With a really consistent and you know solid clean drive from him. Ricardo gets a second third place in a row. So he came out of nowhere remember Ricardo he was down in P20 uh, you know at the start of this race or a bit in the middle of the race so he's done amazingly to recover actually and That's stick with the, the program meanwhile, meanwhile his teammate was nowhere and for us I mean it's a very hard fought uh, P8 ahead of the Williams ahead of Button which is quite crucial I guess for us in the championship but it's uh, it was a tough race out there for both of us it was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today so, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature, and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to every one of the team. So yeah, it looks like Red Bull have finally arrived, you know, ever since season one, they've been kind of there or thereabouts. Last season, they were probably looking their quickest at the end of the season with Fernando Alonso and Verstappen all changed this season. Looked a bit shaky at first, but now they've got back-to-back -back race wins with Schumacher and Perez. They look consistently quick in qualifying. Uh, and they were there, remember, at Bahrain as well, off the bat. They just got unlucky. So I think Red Bull genuinely have arrived now this season in the championship. Button still leads the way, but his gap is reduced to eight points now. But I'm no longer in second. After that, P8, it's quite low down behind Perez and Verstappen. Perez is the one in second. Verstappen up to third. I'm down to fourth place here. We've closed the gap to Jensen as well. But everyone around me has also done that. So it's getting mighty close now. And, you know, Button, you know, he had an okay race at Monaco. But this was a pretty poor one. And obviously, everyone behind him in the standings did better. Especially Perez, Verstappen, and even Gasly as well. So all of us are creeping up. So, you know, this early stage, it's Looking at even Ricardo's there, you know, 47 points, only, uh, you know, further, you know, four points back from Gasly. So, 
it's anyone's game. You've got a McLaren, Alpha Tauri, Mercedes, Red Bull, and then R2 cars there. That is mighty, mighty exciting in terms of a championship battle. In terms of the constructors, then, Red Bull are starting to make a march to try and close up us in second place. Mercedes in P3 being dragged up the order, kind of single-handedly by Verstappen, really, if we're being honest. Alpha Tauri lower down than they probably should be due to some bad fortunes for Sonoda this race and generally for the two Alpha Tauris at Monaco and a couple of races, obviously, that we've had. McLaren, you know, they have got the reigning world champion, but they've just, you know, been very up and down. They're either there with Ricardo or just not there. I mean, Lando's had some horrendous races this time. It really is time for Ricardo's time to shine this season. Obviously, we've seen that yo-yo of, you know, in the first season, it was Lando, then Ricardo, then Lando, then Ricardo. This weird kind of yo-yo coding with the two uh, McLaren teammates. And then Williams, P6, trying to punch above their weight, ahead of Ferrari and Alpine right now. Ferrari having a dismal season to forget. I mean, I thought they were going to be up there. How foolish was I? P7, horrendous season so far for them. Just not living up to the potential and the speed that they're showing in flashes. And Williams bought us off the mark. Maybe that's the start of Williams finally kind of solidifying themselves and even going for a charge on McLaren because, you know, genuinely, they look quick in the hands of Bottas and Guan Yu Zhou. They just need to both finish in the points consistently more compared to their rivals like Alpha Tower and McLaren are doing at the moment. But what a, what a, well, really fun Azerbaijan Grand Prix, actually. It was a tough one for us, uh, for, a for our team. We didn't have too much pace. Whether that means we're going to struggle at Canada as well, another circuit has long straights, I don't know. I don't know if that was the reason or, or what. We just lost a bit of race pace and obviously in qualifying we had a howler. That didn't help us at all as well. We may have done better if we had both qualified better, but it is what it is then. It was still a fun race to turn a watch along as well, nonetheless. So guys, if you did enjoy it as well, then hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.